The infamous Phil Spector died at the age of 81, reportedly from COVID-19. He's known almost everywhere in the world as one of the most controversial and brilliant public figures in the music industry. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Phil Spector. He was a talented musician and record producer, as well as a convicted murderer. We're going to take a look into some of his darkest secrets, his biggest accomplishments, and his net worth, which we're pretty sure will shock everyone. Phil Spector started his career in the mid to late 50s. At the time, he was entering his early 20s. He developed a music production formula called Wall of Sound and is known as one of the most influential figures in pop music and rock history. He spent a lot of his early days as part of the Teddy Bears, a group he co-founded with his friends from school. The next decade, he co-founded the label Phillies Records and at one point was the youngest label owner in the U.S. He also established the role of the recording studio as an instrument and integrated the pop art aesthetic into the music industry. Yet later on, he was convicted for the murder of a famous actress. Who is Phil Spector? Phil Spector is the stage name of Harvey Phillips Spector. He was born December 26, 1939 in the Bronx, New York. He's the first of two children to Benjamin and Bertha Spector, the other being his younger sister, Shirley. His father committed suicide in 1949 when Phil was just 10. The rest of the family moved to Los Angeles shortly after. When he was a student, he learned to play the guitar and found himself performing in local talent shows. While attending Fairfax High School, he formed the group The Teddy Bears alongside his friends Annette Kleinbard, Marshall Lieb, and Sandy Nelson. The band secured a recording deal with the well-known label Era Records, with whom they released their first number one single, To Know Him Is To Love Him. Just before they disbanded in 1959, they released several recordings, including their debut studio album titled The Teddy Bears Sing. Starting in the 60s, Spectre began working on the foundation of his own label. In March of 1960, in collaboration with promoter and producer Lester Sill, he founded his first record label, Phillies Records. In the process, at 21, he became the youngest label owner in the U.S. The first recording artist he worked with was Ronnie Crawford, later followed by the likes of Ruth Brown, Laverne Baker, and Billy Storm. A year later, he took the job of being a producer for Liberty Records. Throughout the decade, he slowly started working with more and more established artists and bands, such as Tina Turner, Darlene Love, Crystals, The Ronettes, and The Righteous Brothers. Surprisingly, after working with so many big names, Spectre decided to close his label. Starting in the next decade, he began working with the Beatles. He produced and wrote many songs for both the group and its members, specifically for John Lennon and George Harrison. He produced numerous recordings, including the albums Imagine, All Things Must Pass, and Let It Be. As the 1970s progressed, he became increasingly reclusive. In 1974, he had a near-fatal car crash in Hollywood, in which he was thrown through the windshield of his vehicle. Towards the mid-years of the decade, he established the label Warner Specter, created during his partnership deal with Warner Brothers Records. Through his new label, he produced chart-topping hits for Cher, Tina Turner, Jerry Bocchino, and Danny Potter, among others. The Downfall of Phil Spector's Career The producer, dubbed the first tycoon of teen, remained inactive throughout most of the 80s and 90s. In the 80s, rumors began circulating that he threatened artists, especially the members of the group The Ramones, with guns. Following the death of John Lennon, he re-emerged and co-produced Yoko Ono's fifth album, Season of Glass, released in 1981. He then appeared mostly at award shows and Hall of Fame ceremonies, where he received praise from critics and colleagues. He was inducted into both the Rock and Roll and Songwriters Hall of Fame. In the late 90s, Spectre also attempted to work with rising star Celine Dion on her fourth English-language studio album entitled Falling Into You. Eventually, due to legal and technical issues with the production team, the deal was canceled. The new millennium brought a lot more legal problems for Phil Spector. In February of 2003, the notorious producer shot and killed actress Lana Clarkson while at his mansion, the Pyrenees Castle, located in Alhambra, California. A few months later, during an interview with Esquire, Spector claimed the death was actually an accidental suicide. He also stated Clarkson kissed the gun and she knew it was loaded, although his driver, the only witness, stated otherwise. Spector's trial began in March 2007 and he remained free on $1 million bail. The proceedings of Spector's trial were documented and broadcasted on national television. All that time, the record producer continued to be a hot topic in the media. He attended the funeral of Ike Turner, Tina's husband. He continued to make enemies during his eulogy when he criticized Tina for her autobiography and for the promotion done by Oprah Winfrey. 
In mid-April 2008, a special documentary titled The Agony and Ecstasy of Phil Spector aired on BBC Two. The documentary marked his very first screen interview. It features images from the contentious murder case, as well as live appearances of his songs on television programs during the 60s and 70s. His murder case went into retrial and resulted in a guilty decision in May 2009. Spector was immediately taken into custody and sentenced to 19 years to life. He was imprisoned at the California Healthcare Facility, where he was held until his death. Phil Spector's Net Worth At the time of his death, his daughter, Nicole Spector, claimed her father had passed away from difficulties of COVID-19. Even though he spent the last chapter of his life behind bars, he was still making money from the royalties of his countless hits. As per reports by Celebrity Net Worth and other sites, Spector's estimated net worth was exceeding $65 million at the time of his death. As per the website, his net worth could be much higher, and that depends on the current ownership status of his royalty catalogs. To explain this net worth, you have to consider the caliber of some of the songs Phil Spector had a role in. For example, one of the hit songs he produced is You've Lost That Loving Feeling by The Righteous Brothers. This single became not only a chart topper and worldwide hit, but also was ranked as the most played song on American radio and TV in the 20th century. It accumulated over 8 million airplays by 1999. This song, in combination with the song Unchained Melody, are reported to have generated more than $120 million in royalties at the time of this video. And that's just one slice of his portfolio, which, as a reminder, included albums from The Beatles, The Ramones, John Lennon, George Harrison, and more. Because of his incredibly large net worth, and despite the murder of Lana Clarkson and other controversies surrounding him, Phil Spector remains one of the most valuable producers ever. Now we'd like to hear from you. Do you remember tuning in for the Phil Spector trials? Let us know in the comments if you saw him on television. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to stay updated on all our latest content.